Welcome to your weekly program, Bulahdan, a show with an accent for those without one. The torture report, 6,000 pages, almost 7,000 pages of details what the CIA did. And eventually, he summarized the report. We torture some folks, as uh, President Bush uh, cutely uh, and homely says, we torture some folks. Seven thousand pages who torture some uh, some folks and the debate now turned from who tortured and what and what are we going to do and why to is it effective or not uh, enhance uh, interrogation techniques as they call it which is torture another name uh, is it effective or not and it's not a moral or legal uh, debate now it is a pragmatic debate and uh, we usually when we are in trouble with the CIA and we as are the other deep states, as they usually say, we invite uh, a special agent, a former special agent of FBI, we brought Colleen uh, Rowley, and she's a whistleblower and uh, a time person of the week, among other three, I think, whistleblowers, and she with us is going to explain us those 7,000 pages. <laughs> Welcome to Bill Ahdan. Uh, I, I, before we start, this is a lot of, a lot of information, I don't think, I think uh, for me, uh, to, to, to uh, like will be like a force reading for Dick Cheney and, and, uh, and Bush. They are forced to read this, we call it forced communication techniques. They should read every minute of it. So before we start, uh, 7,000 pages, been working on it for five, six years. Why now we, uh, we see that report? Well, I think there's a couple of answers. One is that immediately the Senate Intelligence Committee is going to change its leadership. Uh, so they were recessing for the holidays, and then it's going to, to uh, go to Republican leadership. The Republicans, as this investigation began, pulled out of it on that committee. And so the thought was they are going to bury that report. It will never see the light of day once January comes and the new leadership takes uh, effect. So this really was the last day it could be released. But there's a bigger reason, which is that over the last couple of years, the CIA has been fighting tooth and nail uh, against Feinstein to the point where Feinstein even has to give a speech about how this is a constitutional crisis because the CIA has hacked into the Senate's uh, own computers and changed things and deleted things. And then, of course, Brennan, who is the CIA director, was the former drone assassination czar working directly for Obama. They sat together every Tuesday. Now he is the director of CIA. Yeah, he was. Yes, he's the common link between the Bush administration and the Obama administration because under the Bush administration, he played a role in the torture apparatus, the secret renditions, the setting up of Guantanamo, all he, of those He things. had a press conference and, and answered a few questions. He seems a very edgy and yeah. self-righteous uh, human being. <laughs> well, he has every right Does to... Does he represent that culture of CIA? He, he's not the only one, of course. He's just now the head of it. And he has had many years of playing these roles as as guiding these, these really illegal and certainly unethical and counterproductive policies, going all the way back to right after 9-11 when they decided. So why would the... Uh, Can I just say one thing? One thing I learned from the report that I did not know, I knew a lot of, yeah, I've been yeah. following this, so I knew a lot of things. The order to go to the dark side, go off the, the grid of the rule of law, that was given by Bush and Cheney six days after 9-11. Six days. Six days after 9-11, and that's in the news articles reporting this thing. I, that's something that even I didn't know it was that quick. I thought it was a few couple yeah, of months. Yeah, understand I didn't what's realize going on. Six days that order so went So what that means, they've been talking about it before 9-11? Well, you know, I think the CIA has long experimented I with see. torture. Okay. Uh, if you go back to the 50s, so they were go, doing these let's things. Let's go back uh, and, and, and find out what we're talking about. This is uh, torture had been uh, gone for a few years, mm -hmm. uh, right uh, after 9-11. 190 detainees, 
uh, they took them from the legal system, put them in uh, what do you call them, the dark cells, yeah. out of the black, law. Black sites. Black cells, mm -hmm. whatever. And why do they have to go through all this trouble to go to Guantanamo, which out of our jurisdiction, the uh, legal things, mm -hmm. and to put them in a dark seat where they can do whatever they want and lie about it, like what they usually do? Well, one of the problems, obstacles that they immediately confronted is the rule of law. I mean, essentially, what I think what a lot of gets lost in this is these things are so highly illegal, especially torture. Um, if you're calling it torture by its true name, it is called in Latin, use cogens. And on, with rape, rape and slavery, it's in a special category. Torture, rape, and slavery are use cogens. There can never be an excuse or a rationalization for those This is a universal uh, Geneva. Yes. Uh, and, common, and actually the common law of international common law. law. A human yeah. law. Yeah. And so when you're going up against an obstacle like that, um, you know, you, you have to get your lawyers involved, which is what they did eventually. You know, even though the order was given to go to the dark side six days after 9-11, they had to then enlist their own Department of Justice attorneys like John Yu and Robert Delahunty. It was somebody from uh, St. Thomas, University of St. Thomas. That's right, Robert Delahunty. Uh, he co-authored. And he's still teaching. Yes, and, and uh, so these first memos that were written basically said the Geneva Conventions no Doesn't longer apply. apply to the war on terror. One of the early memos written in October 2001 basically instituted martial law in the United States. People don't even know about that one. and that was Martial called, law. Martial law, yeah. And this was this written is a civil war, yeah. in October to, uh, 23 of 2001. So to this day, many of those memos are still on the books. And it's one of the reasons why we're so worried about the, the continuation of these illegal methods, because the truth is they have never been stopped. You mentioned that this happened under the Bush administration, but Obama has used the same uh, tactics, but an, an, an slightly different. You know, in, for instance, in torture, instead of setting up hit the U.S.'s own black sites in cooperating countries, what they're doing now is just sending people to uh, you know, Egypt or, or different places that will actually do torture by proxy. So there's a slight difference there. So they outsource torture. Mm -hmm. So uh, since I'm covering what's going on in Egypt now, which is the military, Kahunta now, taken over, and they're doing all sorts of torturing, all sorts of abuse, police, uh, police brutality, uh, persecution, detention, and will not even pay attention to uh, General Sisi is almost... Yeah. Uh, so what it was the role of Egypt in all of this? Well, there were, they say it's a lot of countries that actually... Yeah, it was Poland, Jordan, yeah, for Albania. One, they gave permission to fly these secret kidnapping renditions. They, in Poland case, they set up a black site. Um, the UK, by the way, uh, who was our main ally, yeah. did a whole bunch of things. Sweden even did some things. You know, so people don't don't realize that these countries all cooperated in these highly illegal. But by diffusing the blame, though, by actually saying, uh, "Well, but so many countries were involved," it makes accountability we're really hard. We're not down on the bad guys. Yeah, and and the UK actually took out the mentions. Uh, there was there's a lot of redactions in that summer re report because they don't want anyone to know how what they did and cooperated. And the U.S. took out the. You mentions. know, it's really fascinating to me. Uh, the effort and the length they go through to lie and justify. Now, they, they hire a highly paid psychologist, $81 million, $120 million on his contract to justify uh, psychological or explain or uh, administrate psychological right. torture. Because professionalism gives a veneer of legality. They had doctors, they had psychologists, all to say this is humane. And of course, th this provides, and lawyers, of course, uh, it provides the Bush administration then an excuse to say, well, look, yeah. all these smart intellectual professionals said it was fine. I just heard a, one of the Bush administration apologists say this on so it's worth the money to them. <clears throat> Again, the law is an obstacle. If you want to do really highly illegal things, and, and, and like I said, <clears throat> Cheney called it the dark side. He didn't call it the dark side for, for uh, no reason, because these things are off the grid. They are simply, you know, the, the CIA. Exceptional. Yeah, the CIA is secret. And so they're allowed to be off the grid. They're allowed to be covert. They're allowed to do illegal things in foreign countries. 
I think what the American people don't understand is a lot of the, these really t <coughs> terrible, horrendous. Which you accepted to yes. do. To do yes, they, they accept it on a foreign population. Foreign population. But what's happened now is many of these really bad things Coming have migrated back home. And I think that might be one of the reasons why even the Senate Intelligence Committee thought we've got to draw a line. And that's really what they did six years ago when they started this investigation. It was based on knowing that Jose Rodriguez, a CIA official, had destroyed the 92 videotapes against court order, by the way. There was a court order to preserve those 92 videotapes, and the CIA on its own just went ahead and destroyed them. And so that shook, shook them up enough that they said, you know what, we're going to have to draw a line, we're going to have to look into it. And when they started to look at it, what they learned shocked even them. They, so they didn't know a lot of this stuff. They knew, they knew obviously, they were briefed. Yeah. But I think... They were, they were even uh, given opinions and given permission. Yes. Uh, there are law, law there are, you know, there are also law, uh, our Congress makes law. Mm -hmm. Well, they were brief. They're called the Gang of Eight, but there's a certain small, small number of the chairs and minority uh, seats in these uh, intelligence committees that did know about black sites. Um, but when you're brought in like that, it's, it, you're told that if you tell anything that you will then be, just as they're doing to Snowden, that you will be a traitor, etc. And so it's a way to get a larger uh, acquiescence is through this Gang of Eight. And if the public is kept uh, out of the picture and not knowing for what, what it was now, 12 years, 13 years, 14 years, then eventually the public, it's like the little frog uh, that's you know, in the water, the public then goes along with it too. And I think this was a deliberate, it was deliberately uh, applied this way in secret so that people would eventually, as we have, unfortunately right now in the United States, 50-some uh, percent majority of Americans when polled believe, falsely believe that torture works. And that's because they did not know the truth about these things. They saw stupid movies like Zero Dark Thirty, like 24, and they believed that if it's ethical, if we torture someone, if we can find the bomb that will save lives. The majority of Americans are now believe this. You know, by the way, completely false completely false. This report is trying to do that. They're trying to show through evidence that torture did not work to find bin Laden, that these things actually backfired. Uh, you know, they got Some a, of them stopped cooperating. Yeah, they got a false, con the worst one is of they course. got a false confession. It works, by the way, torture works to get false confessions. And Bush and Rumsfeld ordered that they get evidence to show that uh, Iraq was behind 9-11. As somebody, you know, I wasn't tortured in that sense. As somebody also as a young kid, uh, been uh, experienced uh, torture. It's really it's a, it's a, it's an amazing thing. The confrontation between you and the person who's torturing you. There is no witness.